I am Lord Simon Lockhart. Having proven myself as a loyal knight to Lord Randall Tarley of Horn Hill, he has since granted me nobility over the southernmost region of the West March. With the newly claimed lands of Sunwatch under my banner, under the banner of House Lockhart, my mind is ceaselessly plagued by thoughts of what my legacy and what my dynasty shall accomplish in their time. But the means of warfare, political intrigue, and diplomacy is played in a much different manner than that of the traditional knight. From lowborn to lordship, it is my duty to raise the name of House Lockhart into the annals of the greatest houses of the Reach. My means of this silent conquest comes in the form of the most lusted after object in all of the Seven Kingdoms. Gold. Glorious gold. Only by acquisitioning great amounts of wealth in my time as Lord of Sunwatch will I be able to raise to the heights of nobility and forever mark my family name down in the annals of history. Greetings, knights and knaves, lords and ladies, tis I, your Lord Commander, and welcome back to the lands of Westeros here in Crusader Kings 3, a Game of Thrones mod. Now I have good news and bad news for today's episode. Uh, good news is I did manage to get our uh, Crusader Kings 3 game up and running once again. Uh, despite all the uh, the game crashes that I was talking about last week. Uh, the bad news is that unfortunately having, uh, despite having fixed the game itself, our uh, our house marshal, arid marshal uh, playthrough, the, the save game has been uh, unfortunately broken. Probably from all the times I try to load it up in the new version of the game before rolling it back. But, but that being said, unfortunately, uh, our House Marshall series has unfortunately come to an end. Uh, it is quite sad, but another bit of good news is that we can finally get started on our next Crusader Kings 3 A Game of Thrones playthrough. Starting here with our Rags to Riches Tyrell playthrough. So allow me to introduce our character. This is, in fact, Simon of House Lockhart. He was a knight, a cell sword, uh, rising up through the ranks. He was from a very, very little, uh, not very well known hamlet uh, just outside of Horn Hill, the home of the uh, the Tarleys of the Reach. And through several, several years of uh, of promising servitude as a uh, as a knight captain for. Uh, Randall Tarly, the Lord of Horn Hill. At least I think it's still Randall Tarly around this time. I'm pretty sure it is, because uh, we are playing in the uh, during the era of uh, Robert's Rebellion still. So, um, <laughs> having worked very valiantly as a uh, as a knight captain for uh, Lord Randall Tarly, he did in fact raise him up to nobility and gave him a small bit of land known as Sunwatch. He has uh, a grand total of two duchies. Uh, technically only one, though, or one holding, I suppose, because there is a, uh, yeah, there is a master here, Lord Edgar of Coven's Hollow, which is perfectly fine. I see no issues with that, if I'm being absolutely honest. Uh, but there is opportunity to build ourselves up, uh, and truly turn Sunwatch into the envy, the great shining green jewel of the South, for sure. Now, we all know of the, uh, the high towers of Old Town, we all know of the uh, the beauty of uh, of Horn Hill and High Garden, but soon, very very soon, through one means or another, uh, the entire realm will know of the uh, the Lockhearts of Sunwatch. Now, for this playthrough, uh, we do intend on doing a sort of rags to riches type build. Uh, our man just starting off, just freshly out. From being a uh, from being a a hedge knight now being a landed knight and granted the uh, the lordship of Sunwatch, he is willing to utilize uh, whatever means that he can in order to raise uh, his stature and the the name of his family's house. And being this far south, being down here in the uh, in the Reach, he knows that there's only one true way in order to complete these ends, and that is to make copious ungodly amounts of money and as quickly as possible the truest way to turn heads is by uh is by making more money than they could ever hope to achieve in their life <laughs> quoting that by me trademarked <laughs> 
Now, we don't have an official goal here, like, you know, make a million gold or whatever, or uh, or conquer this split of land or this or that. Um, honestly, we'll just have to feel it out as it goes along. So we are kind of role-playing it as a, uh, a hedge knight turned landed knight, uh, but hoping to uh, to utilize the, uh, the true language of the realm that everybody really speaks the best, and that is uh, the language of gold and stewardship and... Uh, and spending for sure <laughs> in order to raise himself and his family's name up into the ranks of nobility and of course to be counted among the richest lords of the reach so again we will most certainly have to kind of feel it out as we go along uh once we reach a decent stopping point we'll probably cut off the uh the series there uh i don't plan on dragging this one out as long as many of our other ones but maybe we can have a little bit of fun with it you know what i'm saying so without further ado, lads, let us jump into our new adventure. So we can send for a new maester from the Citadel, which is perfectly fine. We can also choose a patron aspect. All right, so we're actually going to go for the warrior. Uh, not a lot of these really give us a, uh, a decent amount of like uh, increase to any of our uh, money earning capabilities for sure. Um, so I figured we can continue to rely on, uh, on the warrior to protect us as a knight, our house of knights now here. I think our best bet other than the, uh, the warrior would be the smith just for the increase in stewardship, uh, which will help out with our ability to, uh, increase our income per day. However, that is not quite going to be the case here. So we're going to get rid of this one lifestyle for sure. So being a uh, being a knight and our martial education, we do have one perk to unlock in the martial skill tree. Um, but we are going to stick with our stewardship skills for sure. And then go for a wealth focus. So by selecting our wealth focus, we will be able to increase our monthly income by 10%, which is going to help out immensely as we uh, as we go along. Having chosen something else, though, we do have one uh, martial perk to increase i don't want to increase my prowess and i don't really care for dread but uh decreasing our costs even if it's just the uh, cassis belly by 50 percent is going to help out immensely with our ability to uh to save money for sure we are also not married so we can go and jump into that all right so delena florent might be our best bet our character is 18 and our uh bride to be is only 12 uh, but she comes from House Florence, which has a vastly uh, superior military strength to ours. Uh, and they're not located too far away. The, uh, yeah, the Brightwaters, or the Florence of uh, Brightwater Keep are off over here. And we are just down here. So not too far away, uh, which will uh, definitely keep us uh, pretty well protected should any, uh, should any invaders start... Uh, you know, pushing their way towards us, especially as we start to uh, accumulate our wealth. Oh, they also have a uh, an unpressed claim on the whole Lord Paramountcy of the Reach. That is interesting. Yeah, so I I'm definitely gonna take this opportunity and uh, and marry myself off to uh, Delena Florence. Oh, they will accept by one. Yeah, marrying down is minus forty. That's crazy. Send the proposal though. Yeah, not bad. What else can we do? We can hire a maester, which we already did. We have too few knights, so we can invite a couple of more as well. So let's go ahead and get some of those decisions working. Gardener. Increases our stewardship. You know what? It's only going to cost 15. Let's send the herald. Let's get ourselves a, uh, a gardener. Mern. Good to meet you. Oh my. Yeah, so we don't have any kind of uh, military here, which is why... Which is absolutely terrible. We've got 629 levies, and that is it. So, uh, I do believe we can go ahead and create our first... Our first regiment here. I kind of want to go for the armored footmen. Uh, they're going to be quite expensive. We can wait and save up to get some summer nights. Uh, but I would like to start us off with having at least some troops and not being absolutely fucked. So, let us create our first regiment and get them stationed here at Sunwatch Keep. There we go. Now we're starting off our campaign with uh, 13 gold. So certainly, certainly uh, rags to riches indeed. Beautiful. To the sensible Simon, I gladly accept your betrothal proposition. You will be betrothed to my niece, Delena. 
Signed, Lord Alistair of Brightwater. Excellent, thank you, my lord. The new maester of Sunwatch has arrived, Alan. The maester I sent for from the Citadel has arrived in Sunwatch. A crown lander by the name of Alan. Let us hope he will be loyal and wise. Good. Oh, fuck, I'm in debt. Ah, oh, no. Offer knight tutelage. Interesting. Greetings, my implacable vassal. I would like for your best friend, Orton Chetwood, to become the squire of Edmund Ambrose, a most skillful knight. Signed, Lord Randall of the West of March. Of the West March, sorry. Um, absolutely. My my best friend will is gonna be trained under a knight. That's beautiful. Yeah, but now I now I lost my steward, which is un uh, unfortunate. So let's get Lord Edgar of Coven's Hollow. Which is perfect. I'm also in debt, which is not good. Certainly rags to riches indeed. It's going to be quite difficult right off the bat. I can already feel it. I mean, we're starting off much, much smaller than uh, we have previously. You know, typically we would take over as the High Lordship because that's what we did up north as the uh, the Guardlanders. Was we were the, uh, the, you know, the Lord Paramount or whatnot. But rather, this time, we are a minor lord in charge of a, uh, a minor house, for sure. <laughs> oh, this is horrendous. Alright, we might just have to super speed it up in order to, uh, to get us through this unfortunate debt that we find ourselves in. <laughs> oh no, a county in need. These are tumultuous times for the lordship of Sunwatch. Report after report arrives detailing the dire state of affairs in the area, and the peasants have started muttering about alternative solutions. Oh no. Increase the tax as punishment. Ooh, suppressed unrest, holding taxes plus 10%. Being the honorable knight, we would definitely want to do the uh, meticulous management here, but this is a challenge about rags to riches, so let's see if we can't increase our tax as punishment. See, there we go. Making money. Excessive tariffs. The Lordship of Gun Sunwatch. A smuggling ring. Ah, no. For five years. My steward has poor stewardship skills. That's absolutely awful. Alright, let's go and set our focus here. Do their best. Ah, Eamon. This is not... This is not okay, dude. This is not okay. Yeah, you're, you're not allowed to, to be here. Some of all skills. Purse. Yeah. Eamon, I'm sorry, but you're you're fired here, dude. Yeah. Oversee my realm. Thanks. As for my chancellor, let's do uh, domestic affairs for sure. Keep our small folk happy. Yeah. Collect taxes from my steward. The fact that his stewardship skill is so genuinely terrible just makes me quite upset. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Yeah. We're going to swap my steward and my chancellor because my chancellor, Mern has a higher stewardship skill. Yeah, very nice. That works for me, honestly. There you go. So, uh, collect taxes, oversee domestic affairs, let us uh, train our commanders, yeah, disrupt schemes, and religious relations. Perfect. All right. Not bad. But now let us uh, continue to super speed through this shit. Coins of the old reach. Keeping the finances of my realm in check is of the utmost importance to me. Imagine my surprise when I stumbled upon an odd coin while counting my monies. Before Aegon's conquest, the Reach used, to, used its own gold coins, known as hands, for the symbol of Garth Greenhand on them. How, was, how this one ended up in my possession, I have no idea, but what should I do with it? Interesting. I ought to sell it for some real coin. I don't want to sell it, because I could potentially use it. Kingdom of the Reach coin for ten years. A coin, from a coin from before the conquest, though now only worth the value of the coin it's made with, perhaps it will be it will make an interesting conversation piece. Ah, uh, see, I don't I don't give a shit about a conversation piece, dude. Oh, it's to sell it for some real coin. Yeah, there we go. See, now we're no longer in debt. That's perfect. My knight became a blade master, Eamon. Yay, congratulations. He is uh he does not like me very well, does he? He doesn't like that I'm ambitious. He also doesn't like that he was fired from my council. Well, that's kind of what you get for sucking at your job. I don't know what to tell you. Sorry, mate. We are also going to take a moment and try and uh, modify our vassal contract. What if I gave you less money? Would you just accept that? Pretty please. But also war declaration. But also, if I gave you more men. Nah, we'd have to do one at a time. So I, I still won't be able to do the uh, sanctioned war declaration. 
right off the bat. He's not going to give me that right off the bat. Uh, but he will accept low feudal taxes uh, in return for high feudal levies. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Perfect. Thank you, my lord. And now we're paying less taxes than we were before. I don't know why this uh, dropped so horrendously, but expenses to court positions. Ah, my courtiers. Yeah, my maester. I'll fire you in a heartbeat. But, no, nah, I don't want to do that. It's fine. Yeah, I guess, I guess I'm paying my maester 0.14. I don't think I'm paying anybody else except for my, uh, my troops, my own troops. Which is fine and dandy. Can I offer guardianship? To uh, Melissa Tarly, my my Lessa Tarly, oh she's a she's a young child. He will accept it though. Rank difference. He likes how my, he likes my skills. He doesn't like my culture though. Really, I thought we were the same. No, he's a marcher and I'm a uh, I'm a reachman. Yeah, I'll I'll send the Raven to offer it. I would like to uh, keep our relations with the Tarleys uh, as good as we can, as positive as we can make them. Uh, however. You know, that will be uh, increasingly difficult as time goes on. Especially when people start uh, declaring war on one another and whatnot. Yeah, greetings my implacable vassal. We are happy to accept your proposed education arrangement. A noble upbringing for a noble spirit. Signed, Lord Randall of the West March. Perfect, thank you my lord. Oh no. Council invitation. Greetings my sensible vassal. You have been a loyal and devoted subject, and I wish to reward you for your service. In recognition of this, I, I am hereby offering you the position of Spy Master of the West March. Signed, Lord Randall of the West March. I accept, my lord. Thank you. Very nice. Amen. He keeps getting better and better as we go along. Not bad, my friend. Not bad. Beautiful. And we've received our first stewardship. Uh, yeah. Perk. There we go. <laughs> Perk unlock. Um... Uh, I can demand payment for hooks. I would like to go for the uh, av avaricious, avaricious, like avarice, you know, avaricious, uh, you know, perk list down here because uh, we can get increased gold like immensely right off the bat. Um, ooh, tax man. Collect taxes effectiveness is 25%. Ooh, interesting. Interesting for sure. Building construction, holding construction. It, uh, decreased cost vassal tax contribution yeah we're just gonna have to go through and get all of them like one at a time uh not bad though all right not a bad start to our uh, our campaign we're at 51 gold currently the stealer of crops oh no a local farmer has brought forth a man he accuses of stealing crops from his field the thief claims that he did so only to feed himself as he had nothing to eat and is starving Surely a lord such as myself can find a just solution. Interesting. The man is just trying to survive. I could lose dread. I also lose the trait just. The law is clear. Or a waste of my time. Lock them both up. Oh no. Uh, I don't want to do that. And I would gain the trait wrathful. And I don't want to do that. So the law is clear. Send that man to the prisons. Get out of my face, dude. The wine merchant. While making my way through the market, a wine merchant caught my attention. They offered a rare vintage to me for sale. You can clearly see that this is an... Oh, yeah, because my intrigue skill. Nice. You can clearly see that this is, in fact, a poor attempt at making a fake. You gain 75 uh, prestige. Ha! A poor imitation of a finer wine. Get this swill out of my face before I throw you in my dungeons for <laughs> wasting my fucking time. Imprisoned. Oh, no. Lord Randall, my inept liege, is now held against his will by Lord John. Ah, oh, John Aaron of the Vale. Yeah, so Randall Tarly lost for the, uh, lost against, um, you know, lost in the rebellion, at least. Damn, that's a shame. My Lord Tarly, no. Yeah, we're losing this war. Traders in the market. The Reach has many a fine market, and none as grand as, my, as mine own. While visiting the local stalls today, I noticed a caravan of foreign traders has set up shop. I overhear chatter from the small folk about the many wares the traders have to offer. Some which might improve my domains. To think they arrived and set up shop without first seeking me out. Perhaps we could establish a trade route. We can get, uh, possible outcomes. Two years, five years, or ten years. Yeah, increase my holding taxes by 20%. 
Ooh, yeah, let's try that one. I don't think anything happened. <laughs> All right, my lady Delena is now uh, aged up to the age of uh, 16. We are now officially married. Yay! Oh, yeah, and we, we've also officially lost the War of the Usurper. Yeah, that's tough. Oh, Lord Paramount, Mace of the Reach. He lost an eye. That's crazy. Oh, man. I want to know how he lost his eye. That's tough. Yeah, we definitely lost that war. That's a shame. Nice. And now we are married. So let us see uh, if we can't go to our council. Let's see if we can't get her to help us out. Yeah, it gives us increased stewardship, uh, chivalry, increased martial, diplomacy, all of the above. I'd rather have her help out with my domain for sure. Uh, it also increases my domain holdings limit, uh, but it does very little for me at the moment. Now, I want to see if I can't construct new holdings here. Oh, I could, but I'm too broke to be able to do all that. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, a, lo a lot of these buildings are going to cost, like, immense amount of money, which we do not yet have. Uh, which is unfortunate, but we can, in fact, uh, get the fuck over it at the moment. Nice. Oh, man. To the lords and ladies of the seven kingdoms of the Iron Throne... I, King Stannis of the Iron Throne, hereby decree that Lord Renly will be granted Lord Paramountcy of the Stormlands. Interesting. So, Stannis is the new king. What happened to Robert? Ah, uh, was slain by Prince Rhaegar of Dragonstone in a duel. Ah, oh, man. The twist of fate. How the turntables. Interesting. I shall keep my ambitions to myself. Very interesting indeed. Now I'm going to start looking through these new buildings, seeing what I could build that could potentially increase our taxes. There's a couple of here. Yeah, the blacksmiths will increase our holding taxes by 4%. Uh, tax the, as uh, plus 0.1 per month. Yeah, apiaries. Yeah, so the blacksmith seems like our best bet here. Uh, unfortunately... I don't believe we have enough. Where did it go? Yeah, blacksmiths. We need 135. We have 104, uh, which is definitely a step up from where we started. Uh, so for the time being, we're going to continue to wait it out. I don't believe there's uh, too much that I can actually do to start uh, increasing my vast amounts of wealth. Um, other than declaring war, if I'm being honest. And I'd rather not do that right off the bat, especially considering how little we are. You know what I'm saying? So perhaps at some point, uh, we can in fact declare war on somebody and start pushing ourselves in on somebody else's territory. Like perhaps Cornerstone. My issue with my current positioning though, Sunwatch, is that we, uh, you know, if we were to try and like branch out and take any of these lands, we would have to cross uh, around these mountain ranges to get there. Uh, and also if we were to successfully take any of these additional lands, uh, we would be split off from our main uh, de jure title. Or at least, you know, geographically, obviously. Yeah, and, I, and I'd rather not go to war with my own uh, my own liege lord. Even though we could, which is interesting. Yeah, because he's only got 7,000. Our military strength is similar. Yeah. Pregnancy. Fate smiles upon me. My wife, Lady Delena, is bearing my child. Very nice. I cannot wait. I love that. Very nice. My glory is widely known, as well as Freeman's fortune. Creon, 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 a free tenant renting some of my land in Sunwatch, has pulled an excep exceptional harvest this season due to his meticulous planning. He wishes to use some of his profits to purchase a piece of my estate for me so that he can build upon his success and grow more crops next year. Interesting. Creon joins my court. What kind of stats do you have, my friend? Thrifty clerk. I love that. Very interesting. Cynical, fickle, stuttering. Uh, Yeah, he's going to pay me 50 for it. So that's fine. And just like that, we are at 160. We also have low control here in uh, in Sunwatch. Uh, it's because of my, my uh, culture as well as uh, my county control. So, let us uh, increase county control here in Sunwatch. We'll set that task in motion. Yeah, very interesting. So, we are going to go ahead and uh, build up these blacksmiths as well. Yeah, increase our holding taxes by plus 4%. That's perfect. Construct. 
Very nice. It's going to take 22 months, but it shall certainly be worth it in the long term. Nice. We have our second stewardship perk. Uh, defensive measures, cutting cornerstones. Yeah, this would increase or decrease the amount of cost for uh, building construction for sure. As well as holding construction. Interesting. Or meritocracy. Vassal tax contribution plus 10%. I'm actually going to take uh, golden obligations as well. Because that way, uh, whenever we start to uh, develop hooks on people for, for doing things for them or winning in battles against them, uh, we can demand payments for those hooks rather than actually, actually uh, you know, getting anything in return. So, that should help us out. Very nice. My son and heir. With a tired yet blissful smile, Delena presents me with a perfect little son. One day, child, you will carry on my legacy. What name would befit a lord? Tristan, I kind of like that name. Lady Delena's father, Colin. Colin Lockhart or Tristan Lockhart? I like Tristan. Yeah, Tristan. Tristan Lockhart. May you grow to be a strong and may you grow to be strong and wise, my son. Ah, uh, no, cradled by sickness. Not again, bro. Like, come on. We went through all of this before with the uh, the House Marshall series. Ah, oh, man. Your, your son is not gaining weight as he should. We will take care of him, my lord. But in the end, his life is in the father's hands. Ah, oh, that's so sad. Now my son is sick. That's terrible. Household savings. You gained 50 gold. This happened despite your, sp your spouse's poor stewardship skills. You know what, Delena? I appreciate the help anyway. And look at that. We're already back up to 106. Not bad. So we're, we're getting some shit done just a little bit at a time. And it's not looking too terrible. The Maester and the Beetle. The Reach is, a, is home to as many different types of bugs as we have varieties of crops, and it is not uncommon for them to be of the interest to our Maesters. A Maester has come to my court, obsessed with a type of Beetle known only to these parts. He has talked about it endlessly since he arrived. I'm at my wit's end. I finally decide to put my foot down when he begins to discuss the Beetle's metamorphosis from a grub while I'm eating my supper. Perhaps he can bug my marshal. Perhaps he can bug my steward. Yeah. My steward and the visiting maester have been spending time with each other in deep talks. Today I found out why, as Mern hands me a colorful piece of cloth. Apparently, this type of beetle can be used to create a rather colorful dye. My steward believes the dyed cloth can be sold for a decent profit. Maester, tell me more about this beetle. Gains beetle dye for five years. Holding taxes increased by 10%. Look at that. Oh, my wife is pregnant again. That's crazy. Ah, uh, bloomeries constructed in Sunwatch. Perfect. Strange seeds. While in the market, I come upon a vendor who claims to be selling seeds from a far-off land. Uh, I'll buy them. It could be a scam, but this might just end the, like the uh, you know, the the situation here. So, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and purchase them. It's only gonna cost ten gold, which is fine by me. Yeah, nothing. Some time passes after planting the seeds and nothing has grown in that spot. Either the seeds were bad or I, or I have been swindled. Yeah, a waste of gold. That's unfortunate. What else can we build here to increase our uh, our taxes, eh? Probably not a whole lot, if I'm being honest. We can get some hill forts. That's interesting. Increase our garrison and our stationed, uh, our stationed men toughness as well. Supply limit, taxes. Interesting. Cattle pastures. Yeah, very interesting indeed. So we have 122 gold. Let's see if we can't construct a new holding. Yeah, we can't construct a monastery yet, or a castle, or a city, or a temple. It's interesting that they would let us do another city. What is this? Is is uh is Sunwatch a, a city or is it? Oh, it's a castle. Okay. Ah, so we could get, uh, we could get, potentially, we could build a, uh, a city up here somewhere. That would be interesting. Now, my question is, do I want to increase my, uh, military? Uh, I'm not sure if that's gonna be the smartest move right off the bat. Yeah, because it's gonna take all our money just to increase them one time, and we haven't had a need to actually do anything with our military yet. So, we're gonna continue on and just kind of super speed through the first couple of years of this playthrough in hopes of uh, increasing our our income. Oh my, the voice of reason. Another council meeting, another conflict. 
Countess Delena and Septon Laurent are arguing violently about the training regimen of the troops. As Lord, I could silence them with a single word, but I have a better idea. My diplomatic pursuits have given me insights on how to handle situations like these to please everyone. So I can either side with Delena without upsetting Lauren, Laurent, sorry, side with Laurent without upsetting my wife, or find a compromise that makes everybody happy. 23% I arrange a great compromise, 50% I arrange a good compromise. So it's honestly in my best bet to do this one. We'll try it. Yeah, I got a good compromise. Okay, so it wasn't great, but it was good. So I'll take it. I will definitely take that. Uh, I have a beautiful daughter now. Yeah. Uh, Alara Lockhart. Let's name her after Delena's mother. Eleanor Lockhart. I love that. That's so good. So le let me look at my children. Now I have Tristan Lockhart and Eleanor Lockhart. That's beautiful. Send to the Citadel. Interesting. I can, uh, I can start training somebody as a... Uh, as a maester that's interesting yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna educate my own child or at least my son and my daughter can be educated by my wife no not you what the fuck lady delania there we go wonderful now both of my children are being educated we are gaining uh, a good amount of income so far nothing too crazy but we're getting there lads an unexpected visit yet again pierce is late for a council meeting this time, I will not let it pass. When I arrive at Pierce's chambers, I do not give him the courtesy of knocking. Pierce is seated by his desk, writing furiously. As I clear my throat, he jumps out of his skin. He quickly stuffs a roll of parchment into his pocket and turns towards me with an uneasy look upon his face. I could respect his privacy. Nah, fuck that, dude. What are you hiding? Show me at once. Interesting. Did he really think I would not see that? Give it to me at once. With a shivering hand, Pierce offers me a crumpled parchment. Well, well, well. How delightfully wicked. According to this blackmail letter, Pierce feasts on human flesh. Written proof. How considerate. I love that. So let me see. First, we got another uh, perk here. We went ahead and chose meritocracy because this gives us a plus 10% increase to our uh, tax contribution from our vassals. And there's another perk over here called Herigold, which does the exact same thing. So... Uh, next perk, we're going to get Herigold, and together we would have a plus 20% increase just from our, uh, our perks alone. So that's pretty interesting. Making a decent amount of money so far. Now that being said, I do have a, uh, a vassal. Pierce is my castellan. I could imprison him for his, uh, his issue here. Oh no, because he, uh, he's a cannibal. Yeah, we could blackmail him. Use the secret you have to... Yeah, use the secret you have discovered to gain a hook. Yeah, might accept 99%. We blackmail. Now let's see what he says, lads. Yeah, blossoming hatred. The cocky boar Pierce makes my blood boil. How could the seven who are one see fit to curse the earth with Pierce's evil cockiness? No, it is obvious. He is the lord of the seven hell's kin. He is worse than both putrid boil and ravenous locust. I cannot, I cannot stand the mere thought of breathing the same cold-hearted air as him. I must do something. I must act. My sanity depends on it. Driven by vengeance? Uh, you gain 75 stress. Driven by vengeance, huh? Alright. Yeah, we're now, we're now enemies. Alright, hold on. I, I want to use my, uh... I want to use that hook to demand payment. Anyway. A swarm of bees. While strolling through the garden, I come upon a massive swarm of bees. While initially so shocked at the sight of it, a local beekeeper informs me that the bees often behave this way while seeking a new hive. During such a state, the worker bees are very docile and form a mass to protect their queen. Interesting. Perhaps I could try and keep them. Bees can be very uh, profitable if I do it right. A hive of mine. With the aid of the local beekeeper, I am able to set up a new hive for the swarm. He explains that though the hive is docile now, once the queen is established, the colony will show its true personality. The thought amuses me. Bees with personality. Hopefully this will be a profitable venture. Fingers crossed. Who fucking knows, man? One can only hope. So far, we're not off to a bad start, I don't think. We definitely have more money than what we started with. We have more military strength. We have, uh... An increased uh, domain holding limit, despite the fact that we haven't built anything yet. 
Uh, and now we have bees. We're also a beekeeper. Uh, the hive has changed some, but it still remains very docile. I enjoy spending time in the garden, observing the bees working. Seldom do they mind me at all, and I have, got, I have only gotten a few stings since my time keeping my bees. This is quite pleasant. I love that. Congratulations, my friend. The flowers are in full bloom and the hive is bursting with energy. As the bees dart from plant to plant, they pay no mind to me. I find myself outside working the garden more, if only to keep the flowers happy for my bees. When the time comes to harvest the honey, I shall... All I see is liquid gold. Very nice. I must do this again. Possible outcomes. I gain 50. I gain the trait gardener. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, I must do this again. Regardless, I get uh, 50 gold. So now I'm at 200 so far. Not bad. All right, now let's see about building uh, one of these... One of these uh, new holdings here. It says missing 192. Oh, that's why. Ah, damn. I'm foolish. I need 400 total and I need 192 before I can build anything else. I see. I see. All right, so we got bloomeries there. What about Coven's Hollow? What if we built something here to increase our taxes? I might also have to uh, increase how much taxes they're paying me which is unfortunate i didn't want to have to do that but uh if we built some blacksmiths here as well some bloomeries right off the bat it'll give us an additional plus four percent to our holding taxes from this particular hold so let's go ahead and do that we're now br brought back down to 58 gold which is interesting uh which is fine and dandy lady emma of coven's hollow all right that's interesting I wonder why that is as it is. I have a child, a literal child, uh, governing a, uh, a province of my land. That is not the most <laughs> intelligent position to be in, but that's all right. The wood harp player. While resting at a tavern, a beautiful sound fills my ears. A bard is playing a wood harp for the patrons of the tavern. What's a beautiful sound? Perhaps I have a passion for music. I wish to speak to the player. Let's see what happens. Uh, after they finish pe playing, my men inform the Woodheart player that I wish to meet with them. The busker approaches more shyly than I would expect for someone with such talents. Thank you for the music. I gave him a tip of five. Interesting. A ruler in the making. There is no end to the opinions and wants of my son and heir, Tristan. Half the time, he is trying to tell me what to do instead of the other way around. Formidable or aggravating, it is a fine line to walk. Ah, oh, he's gonna get bossy. Silly little baby. Growing strong. Yeah, the weakness that has plagued my son since his birth has finally released its hold on him. Release, relief washes over me as I see Tristan running around with all the other children. Very nice. May you grow strong, my son. Travel. Weird whispers. On the way back home, of course. Naturally, we're going to run into some bullshit. I've noticed that Pierce avoids me more than usual. He always sits at the opposite end of the table whenever we're invited to a feast and consistently refuses my company while camping. We may not have the best of relationships, but that attitude is starting to tire me, especially when I overhear him defaming me. Simon is a false knave. I'd be a way better lord than him. Interesting. You want to know how it is? I'll show you. Prowess challenge against Pierce. Ooh, let, let's, uh, let's get in a fight with the guy. Let's see what happens. Yeah, you win the fight against Pierce and make him leave. Very nice. Gain the trait wounded. Gained mutiny humiliation for five years. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah, and he left my court. Good. Get the fuck out of here, guy. Nice. And now I need to find a new Castellan. Uh, currently, we have him doing intrigue shit, but let us find somebody with a sum of all skills. Uh, Eamon, my knight. He honestly still doesn't know what he's going to do. So Alan, my maester, might be our best bet here. Oh, uh, no. His stewardship is terrible. You know what? Fine. Our maester... Er, nah. Eamon can handle it. Assigned to do their best. Yeah, that's tough. Anyway. Aw, oh, what? Accusations of witchcraft. Blood-stained cloth. Crow's feathers. Strange smelling concoctions. This is the evidence presented to me by a group of villagers from Sunwatch as proof that Alana has been practicing witchcraft in her hut on the outskirts of, her, of their village. The villagers claim her evil works must be the cause of their bad weather and are calling for her execution. Damn, this is a tough one. 
I don't want to light her ass on fire just because my my peasants are superstitious. But if I don't, they're going to be upset, and my uh, yeah, my popular opinion will be minus twenty five, and the danger will increase by five. Uh, but I do gain three hundred stewardship lifestyle experience, which will basically like shoot us up to get us a brand new perk right off the bat. Um, we're gonna go for the the just that that evidence is circumstantial. Release her. Yeah, don't fuck around with me, dude. Beautiful, brand new perk. I love that. Beautiful, and now we can get Hera Gold, and now we've got a twenty percent increase to our uh to our vassal tax contribution. That's fucking beautiful. Now I don't believe I can uh, modify my vassal contract here. Yeah, I don't think so. Which is fine and dandy, if I'm being honest. Yeah, we're also still broke as shit. Yeah, we have a lack of control. Lack of the popular opinion here as well, which is not good. Ah, a curse undone. The twists and turns of fate have not always been to my advantage. The Seven knows that I was cursed the day I met Pierce. Today, however, that curse has been lifted. Fate has smiled upon me and brought that chattering fiend to his grave. Died from his wounds. Ah. Not one day too soon. My rival is now dead. Fantastic. I love that. Roadside stall. While traveling across the hills of the Lordship of Sunwatch, I find a, ma a makeshift looking stall by the side of the track. As I stop to take a look, a peasant by the name of Jenna jumps into action, trying to convince me to buy one of the small seven-pointed star carvings she has on sale. I make them by hand, my lord. Each one takes takes me hours of work. Interesting, Jenna. Uh, 50 gold for... I don't know about that. Ooh, I, I can talk to her and see what I can learn about salesmanship. You gain 100 stewardship lifestyle XP. Let's do that one. That way, I don't lose any money, and I don't lose the opinion of my small folk for <laughs> tearing up her stall for not paying taxes. Look at that. And already, we've gotten another uh, stewardship perk. Let's do War Profiteer. Profiteer. We're not quite at war yet, uh, but once we declare war, we do get a uh, plus 10% increase to our monthly income. A word of advice. I saunter between the market stalls of Sunwatch, a heavy pouch tugging at my belt. How do I make this coin work for me? As I admire the wares of a local jeweler, exquisite fig filigree, a uh, sound investment, Lord Alistair of Brightwater suddenly appears at my side. A word of advice, Lord Simon. Have a look at, at the sculptor's stall over there. Their wares might be simple, but their potential is great. Lord Alistair Brightwater. So the, the literally the, the father of my, my darling wife. Or uh, the uncle of my darling wife. Very honorable, honorable, but very greedy at the same time. Let's try it. Fuck you, dude. God damn it. I just lost all that money. Damn it, dude. That sucks. Rife resolves courtier debt. Interesting. This happened despite your spouse's poor stewardship skills. You know what? Thanks. And now I have a favor hook on Torgan. Who's a knight. Who's a resentful villain. That's not good. Ooh, an invitation. Aw, oh, what the... It went away already. Where did it go? Aw. Oh my. Surf refugees. Lord Landon of the Crawl. Interesting. An influx of serfs have arrived in the Lordship of Sunwatch from the neighboring the Crawl. They claim to be fleeing from the abusive rule of Lord Landon of the Crawl and that they wish to live in my domain instead of his. Legally speaking, they are still in bondage to Landon. But if I let them settle in my lands, it would be almost impossible for him to prove that they are actually his serfs. Nice. Show my serfs to their new farms. I'll take these, uh, these lords of mine. Greetings, Lord Simon of Sunwatch. I know you have stolen my serfs from me. I may not have any way of recovering them, but do not think I will forget this offense. You have earned my enmity. I hope it was worth it. Signed, Lord, Can Lord Landon of the Cruel. Grumble all you want, it does not change anything. Yeah, gained arrival. Interesting. Where is the crawl? Here is the crawl. Yeah, Lord Landon. He's only got 620 men. Perhaps we can declare war. Nah, <laughs> that's not going to happen, unfortunately. That's interesting, though. Very interesting indeed.
Perhaps we can uh, start to lay claim to other counties now. Because we would need... Uh, yeah. Oh, we could lay claim to uh, to Horn Hill. That's interesting. Sure. We'll let that uh, that claim start to fabricate. Ah, new nickname. The Merciful. My liege, have you heard what they call you? My courtier, Lawless, says to me while straightening her back. They call you Lord Simon the Merciful. Spectacular, is it not? It's on the lips of peasant and noble alike. A cause for celebration, I think, Lawless exclaims with a cheery tone. You know, I could get used to this name, the Merciful. You are forgiving, benevolent, and slow to anger. Prisoners rarely have to spend long in your dungeons. Very nice. I like that. I certainly like that. Ah, oh, no, my alliance, Alistair Florence, has died. That's so sad. Yeah, my, my alliance is now gone. That's awful. All right, so with our current uh, stewardship skills, I do believe that we should start to shift our focus onto the, uh, onto the diplomat. Uh, because I would like to uh, be able to... Yeah, propose an alliance without a marriage. Because now we don't have an alliance. So let us go ahead and shift our focus over to foreign affairs uh, for the time being. And we will allow our, uh, you know, our coffers to fill themselves in short time. In due time, for sure. And there we have it, lads. Our first episode of our brand new Rags to Riches uh crusader kings 3 a game of thrones series mini series i suppose because i don't plan on really dragging this one out too too long uh again we don't really have a solid goal set as we go along further on into this uh this mini series perhaps we'll find a suitable goal for us to uh you know to uh, to strive for <laughs> All in all, not a bad episode, if I'm being absolutely honest. This one was certainly fun, despite the fact that we saw absolutely zero combat. Uh, but nonetheless, like this was definitely a very interesting change of pace from our usual hack and slash of the uh, you know medieval warfare and everything like that. Anywho, lads, I do hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please consider dropping a like, because it means the absolute world to me knowing that you guys like what I put out. And if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave it in the comments section below because I absolutely love hearing from you guys as well. The feedback is just mwah, mwah, mwah. beautiful, lads. And of course, if you are new to today's channel, then I, your Lord Commander, implores you to strike ye old subscribe button and to ring the bell of notifications so that you may stay up to date on all of our newest uploads. But that's being said and done, my loyal knights. Always, always, always remember, honor and service, glory and sacrifice. And I, your Lord Commander, will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.